Welcome back to another remake. This is what we're working on. This lead is sick. There's so many different uses for it. So what I recommend, open up your serum, follow along with me, and let me show you how to make this. Before we get started, let me just play you this lead in solo so you could hear it. Now let's get into it. Although I've included the preset in the description below, toss this video a like right now because I'm gonna show you step by step how to make this patch. So first open up Serum with the init preset. It's your basic saw wave. But instead of using the default saw, I wanna head over to my oscillator one and choose the basic MG. Then if you move the weight position to 59, this will get you a saw wave. Okay, next you're gonna head down to envelope number one, which is your amp envelope. You're then gonna take the release and we're just gonna smooth out the tail a little bit. Now you might have noticed as I increase the release, the notes are starting to overlap. To avoid this, I'm gonna check off the mono button, which means only one note can be played at a time. Next, you could add a little bit of portamento. You don't want this to be obvious, but it helps sort of smooth out the performance and not make it so robotic. Then you're gonna head up to your filter section and you're gonna change it to an 18 dB per octave slope. And we just wanna cut off a little bit of the high end, but truthfully, we're more so gonna use this for the drive and fat knob to add some character to the sound. Okay, now we need to create that pitch wobble to the lead, that uneasy feeling that it has. So take LFO1 and drag it up to the fine pitch control in oscillator A. Now I ended up on a value of 17. The number doesn't matter so much, but you could do this by ear and sort of get that flavor that you want. Now this is already sounding awesome. We can get a little more control over this by turning off the BPM mode. And then I can also change the shape to a sine wave, which I liked in this case. And then playing with the rate, I can get the right speed of pitch wobble that I want. Now let's head over to the effects section. We are gonna do post-processing, but there are a few little things I had inside of Serum that helped. First up, we're gonna add some tape distortion. You can go more or less. I ended up on 34%. And then I wanna add a small space around this synth. So I'm gonna do a 16th note ping pong delay, and I'm also going to add some reverb, but I wanna make sure I shorten the decay and cut out some of the low end. Now that's it for Serum, but we're gonna add some ear candy through post-processing. If you're enjoying this KX5 remake, I have done one on Escape where I show you the whole drop. I'm gonna have that pop up on the end screen, so if you're interested in watching, stick around to the end of this and you'll be prompted to head to that video next. So first up, I have my special subscribe to Cosmic Academy EQ. If you're not already subscribed, do it. We've been putting out a lot of content on a weekly basis, not just production, but also the business, social media, branding side of things. So follow along because there's some really good stuff. Now to start, we do have this EQ that's boosting a little bit at the 3K range. Now that's sort of it from like the coloring perspective of this sound. Everything else is going to be more like spatial effects and the effects of getting it to sound huge in the mix. So I do have a little bit of side chain here from Kickstart. And in this case, I liked having my effects after the side chain. It sounded more like the original. Next, we have another ping pong delay, but this is a much longer delay time. So in the synth, it was those shorter 16th notes. This one's gonna create more so that repetition of like the musical phrase of the notes that are being played.
Then we're following it up with a Valhalla Shimmer, and I have this set pretty low. This is a over-the-top reverb, so if you put a lot on, it becomes almost too much to handle, but I'll show you what happens if I add more or less. Next up is the ear candy. This is the kind of shit that makes a professional quality mix. This is the difference between Dead Mouse and Cascade versus your average producer in their bedroom. No offense to those average producers in their bedroom. I'm one too. But this ear candy layer created like a gated effect on the synth and it's subtle, but it makes it a little more special. So let me just play it for you and then I'm gonna show you what it was. <laughs> notice it created that like skipping effect on the sound. Now I'm doing this with Sound Toys Tremolator, but you can do this with any kind of tremolo, the auto pan in Ableton, Shaper Box will allow you to do this. This is just going to modulate the volume in and out, and I'm choosing a rate of 130 seconds. You can see I'm using this ramp shape, and if I increase the depth, it will produce a more exaggerated skipping effect or less. <laughs> Now I just have it stationary, but think about it. That's something you can automate throughout your track. Just a really cool addition to any sound. So something to play with. So after this, I have one more kickstart, just doing a little bit more of some side chain. I just want some of those tails to pump a little bit more, but you can see very subtle. Then I have a cleanup EQ, just taking out some of these low mids here and some of the low end. Now, what is a true synth sound without some OTT on it, right? So. I am just using a little bit of the depth knob, but I've adjusted the thresholds in the middle, these black lines. So those black lines represent your threshold. If the signal goes above it, it compresses it down. If the signal is below it, it pushes it up. This is that upwards versus downwards compression that OTT provides. But more so think of it like this. You could adjust the threshold and sort of get different shapes and sounds out of your patch. So I do a lot of this by ear. It's not a number. It's not really going in so much with a game plan. It's trying to achieve the sound that sounds best. So I couldn't even tell you what these thresholds are set at. It's not a number, it's, it's a sound. <laughs> Now let me play it back and I'll turn these effects on and off so you could hear it in the mix. So you can see the post-processing does a lot to this sound. The beauty of it though is you could do this in any DAW with any plugins, it's just basic processing. So that's it for this one, but I'm looking for my next idea, my next remake. So drop me a comment below, let me know if you have any cool ideas of a song you'd like to see me try and remake. And if you'd also like to work with Justin and I, there's a link in the description below for that too. That's all for now though, and until the next time I see you, keep making music, be good.